Hello all, this is Dr. Anand Nayar. Subscribe to my YouTube channel Gyan with Anand Nayar for latest tech videos on unboxings, server administration, embedded systems, cloud computing, simulations, big data, Linux administration, research methodology, ethical hacking and many more. Hello researchers, how are you? I hope you are fine and doing well. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to install Vector Linux Standard Edition on Oracle VirtualBox. Now before we dive in the installation part of Vector Linux 7.1 on Oracle VirtualBox, let us first of all understand what is meant by Vector Linux and what are its special features and what are the solid facts associated with Vector Linux. Vector Linux abbreviated VL is a Linux distribution for x86 platform based on the Slackware Linux distribution originally developed by Canadian developers Robert S. Lange and Daryl Stevem. Since version 7, the standard edition is also available for x86 64-bit platform known as Velocity 64.7. Now if we talk of some other features of uh, Vector Linux, the working state it is under the current development and the latest release is version 7.2 which was launched on August 28, 2017, 4 months ago. It is available under monolithic kernel type and the default user interface is XFCE, KDE, LXDE, OpenBox, JWM, IceWM. Now, if we talk of more details of Vector Linux, four editions of Vector Linux are maintained. The first is called Soho that stands for Small Office and Home Office. The second edition is a Standard Linux which we are going to install in this video. The third is Lite and the fourth one is Live. So now let us first of all understand what are the different editions all about. The Soho edition that is Small Office and Home Office edition is designed for modern computers and is based for KDE desktop environment. Applications include LibreOffice, Java, GIMP, Xane, Cups, Xerox Stream, financial applications and others. Standard edition is fully downloadable edition based on XFCE and specifically designed for use on older computers with slower processors and less RAM. The Deluxe Standard Edition contains the Standard Edition plus numerous edition applications specific to the VL version. The CD includes many extra applications which you can build the system which best fits your requirement. Additional included applications are LibreOffice and GIMP among many others. Now, Talking about Lite Edition, the Lite Edition is designed for older computers with limited resources. It is supplied with CMonkey as a browser and includes some of the applications found in Standard Edition. Lite Edition is usable on computers with only 256 MB of RAM. The last but not the least edition that is Live Edition but it is discontinued after version 7.0. The Live Editions are bootable CD-ROMs which contain the Vector Linux operating system on the CD. This enables the user to test a distribution on a system without need for installing and repartitioning the hard disk drive. Now if we talk of some features, one prominent feature that VL version have in common is a standard installation of system administration applications like Wasm CC which handles the system configuration whereas SLA apt-get includes the GUI based front end to manage software installation and removal. Wasm CC stands for Vector Administrative and Service Menu Control Center and it configures everything from disk partition to XPoint org server. Now if we talk of package management, two graphical frontends have been written for SLA apps-get which is backward compatibility dependency tracking extension to Slackware package tools and VLAPT which is first and originally written by vector developers to serve the need for GUI package installation and management. Now if we talk of the website, you can see the official website is vectorlinux.com slash linux. So you can see the website over here and if you want to download, go to this downloads and you can finally see version 7.1 standard edition gold which is available and it is can be downloaded easily into ISO file and I've already downloaded this file so I need not go for this and we call for other applications of website you can see that there is a support level there are screenshots and there are even donations so a complete and a consistent Linux in development and a very beautiful Linux to try out now let's come to the practical part of Vector Linux. So let's start Oracle VirtualBox. Now let us go to new and let's type Vector Linux. So the type will be Linux but for the version I recommend you to go with Linux 2.6, 3.x, 4.x, 64 bit. So let's go with next. So let's increase the RAM to 2048. Let's click on next. So click on create, next, next and let us allocate 16 GB of RAM to Vector Linux and click on create. 
So before we fire the operating system, let us go to settings and let's go to advanced. So let's enable bi-directional for shared clipboard and drag and drop facility. Let's go to system and let's check out the floppy disk drive. Let's put the optical drive back to hard disk drive so that we can boot up the hard disk drive after installation. Let's go to processor and let me increase the processor to 2 and enable PAE oblique NX for physical address extension which features the host of CPU will be exposed to virtual machine. Now let's go to storage and click on empty and click on this option. So let's choose the virtual opti optical disk drive file. So let's go to my drive where all the operating systems are downloaded and let's install this Spectral Linux, choose this. So if I go with the properties, you can find that it is a very light operating system and it is about 719 MB. So let's click on OK and let's select it and let's click on OK. And now let's fire the operating system. So in a few seconds, the operating system will start loading. So let's go with full screen mode. And now you can see that it is saying to install the Vector Linux, press the Enter key. So let's press the Enter key. So now you can see that it is saying welcome to Vector Linux, select one of the installations for the method. So let me click on automatic and click on forward. So now it is saying the target location will be automatically 16 GB. So let's click on forward. So let me type one username for uh, operation. And you can see that the password is visible over here. So let's click on next. And now you can see that it is formatting the partitions. And after formatting, it is now started installation of the Vector Linux. So the installation can take from about 3 minutes to 10 minutes, depending on the RAM as well as the speed for installation. So till it installs, let us pause the video for some time and I return when it gets completed. So now you can see that I have already, I have almost installed uh, the Vector Linux and it is now installing the bootloader and it has taken about uh, 7 to 10 minutes in my computer to install it. So at any time now we can be finishing the installation. So let's wait. So all the tasks are done. So you can see that it is done. So we have two options activated quit and reboot. So now what we have to do is to click on reboot. So you can see that it is running the shutdown script and it is unmounting all the file systems. And now we are all set to reboot the first boot of installed version of Vector Linux version 7.1. And yes, you can see that the grub has loaded and now we are left with two options that is Vector Linux, that is the Linux kernel 3.18.16, which is the ultra latest version of Linux kernel. So let's select the first option and press enter so that we can start with the booting process. So a very beautiful wallpaper of Vector Linux 7 has come with some flying bubble effects. In few moments of time it will be booted to desktop and then let's do a Vector Linux. So it is taking some time because it's a first time boot.
So now you can see that it has booted and with the XFCE desktop. So let's give the username and let's log in. So the first time the boot could take some time, but after that it will be smooth like butter. So connection is established to our Ethernet network. So here you can see the menu and some desktops. So let's uh, tour some desktop. So let's click on menu and now you can see that we have all the options like all accessories. We have application file dub, bulk rename, character map, G calculator, leaf pad. And we have uh, development for under Qt. We have graphics, internet, multimedia, office, settings. So if we go with settings and configure display settings. So let's uh, improve the resolution. So resolution is default itself over here. So it has not taken my full laptop uh, resolution. So all the other settings are also available. So let's uh, open the terminal and fire some commands. So you can see that I am working as Anand. So let's fire one command. Who am I? So it is Anand. So let's log in with root with the same command of Ubuntu su space minus and let's type the password. Now you can see that it is working as root. So let's check the IP address of this machine. It is saying 10.0.2.15 which is a standard NAT address for VirtualBox. But if you take this uh, network connection to bridged mode, you can even ping the uh, you can ping this machine from the host machine itself. So let's go with the ping of Google and check the connectivity. And yes, it is working beautifully. So let's update the package system. So with the package name slapt hyphen get space minus minus update it will update all the packages like in the same time like we have apt hyphen get update for ubuntu it's the command so it's the package manager front end package manager for vector linux so it is updating all the packages okay so depending on the net connection as well as the server speed, it can take some few moments. Okay. All doing beautifully. Okay. So it is done. So let's check the kernel name. U name space minus A. So you can see that we have the kernel as 3.18.16. So now let's install the kernel headers slapt space hyphen get hyphen get space minus minus install kernel headers. So it is reading the package list and in a few minutes of time we can install our kernel headers. And rest you can start working as per your requirements. You can configure it as a server. You can configure it as uh, your normal desktop client. Whatever you want to do, you have lots and lots of options. So let's press Y and press enter. So it is done and it is updating all the kernel headers. So it's done. So in this video, I have demonstrated how to install Vector Linux 7.1 on Oracle VirtualBox. So do comment and like this video and do share with me how you are using Vector Linux and for what purpose you are also using. And if you have any question, I will leave my email link down below. You can email me and ask any of your queries. So do like and comment on this video. Thank you so much for watching.